When the crew assigned to test the brand new Airbus F400M Atlas crossed the gates of Seville Airport, nothing hinted that fate had marked that day with a dark stroke. Six souls boarded the A400M that morning, trusting in the technology that promised to be the future. But something invisible was already in motion. What happens when the most advanced technology fails at the worst possible moment? May 9th, 2015, San Pablo International Airport, Seville, Spain. It's 12 noon, and here, a massive A400M waits for its flight crew. The pilots will be testing this military aircraft, a giant of the skies designed to transport troops and any type of cargo, as well as operate as a tanker. The A400M is so versatile that it can drop paratroopers from its rear ramp at an altitude of 12,000 meters. Built by Airbus Defense and Space, this four-engine giant is NATO's dream, a modern replacement for legends like the Lockheed C-130 Hercules and the Transall C-160. This particular aircraft, MSN-023, is destined for the Turkish Air Force, but first, it must pass its trial by fire in the Seville skies. The first A400M began assembly in Seville at the Airbus plant in October 2006. On June 26, 2008, the city hosted the global unveiling ceremony of the first completed A400M. The ceremony, traditionally known in the aviation industry as a rollout, was presided over by King Juan Carlos III of Spain. On November 18, 2009, all four engines were simultaneously started for the first time, with the maiden flight scheduled for the week of December 7th to 13th. With a three-year delay, the A400M's first flight finally took place on December 11, 2009. Back in 2015, aboard MSN-023, six Airbus experts are ready to put this machine to the test. In command is Jaime de Gandarillas, the lead pilot, a man with the calm confidence of someone who knows exactly what he's doing. Beside him, Manuel Reguero, the co-pilot, carefully monitors every detail from the right seat. José Luis de Augusto, the flight engineer, is the technical brain of the team, overseeing systems in real time. Gabriel García Prieto and Jesualdo Martínez, test engineers, are here to analyze every movement of the aircraft. And Joaquín Muñoz Anaya, the mechanic, completes the group, ready to act if anything goes wrong. Both Jaime and Manuel are seasoned test pilots, accustomed to pushing aircraft to their limits. At 12.40 p.m., the aircraft began taxiing toward runway 09 of the airport. At 12.54 p.m., Jaime, the captain, pushed the throttles forward and the aircraft started rolling down the runway. Manuel, the co-pilot, confirmed the rotation speed and they began a smooth climb. The A400M made a 90 degree left turn, heading north. José Luis, Gabriel, Yesualdo and Joaquín watched their screens. Everything seemed perfect. They quickly reached 400 feet, about 120 meters, flying at 320 kilometers per hour. But almost no time had passed before something started to go wrong. The aircraft lost power, the speed stagnated, and they began to descend. Engines 1, 2, and 3 were not responding. The captain tried adjusting the power again, moving the throttles back and forth, but the engines did not react. The flight engineer confirmed the problem. Engines 1, 2, and 3 were stuck at idle and weren't providing enough power to keep the aircraft flying. At that moment, the co-pilot grabbed the radio and contacted Seville Airport's control tower. 
Tower, we have a technical failure requesting to land. But there was no time to return to the airport. Descending at 3,000 feet per minute, the A400M was falling. Jaime fought to stabilize it, but at 12.57 p.m., just three minutes after takeoff, the aircraft struck a high voltage tower in a field five kilometers from the airport. A fireball lit up the sky. Four lives were lost instantly. The wreckage burned in a field near La Rinconada. A local farmer ran toward the scene, risking everything to help. Firefighters and emergency teams arrived quickly from Seville. Among the twisted metal, they found flight engineer José Luis de Augusto and Airbus mechanic Joaquín Muñoz Anaya, badly injured but alive. Sadly, Jaime, Manuel, Gabriel and Gersualdo were not so fortunate. The airport shut down and all flights were diverted to Malaga and Jerez. What had happened? What led this modern giant of the skies and its crew to catastrophe? The answer wouldn't come quickly. It was the beginning of an investigation that would uncover human errors, systemic failures, and lessons that would resonate for years. The task fell to the Commission for the Technical Investigation of Military Aircraft Accidents, CITAM, the Spanish body responsible for clarifying disasters like this. Alongside them, Airbus Defense and Space deployed its top engineers to analyze every fragment of MSN-023. The world's eyes were on Seville, countries like the United Kingdom, Germany and Turkey, which were already operating or awaiting their own A400M aircraft, demanded answers. The first step was to recover the black boxes, the flight data recorder, FDR, and the cockpit voice recorder, CVR. While the exact details of the recordings were not made public, investigators confirmed that they were functional, offering a window into the chaos of those three fatal minutes. The FDR showed that the aircraft had reached a maximum altitude of 526 meters, 1,725 feet, before plummeting at a staggering rate of 3,000 feet per minute. Meanwhile, the CVR captured co-pilot Manuel Bregueiro's desperate message to the tower. We have a technical failure, we need to land but there was no time for more. Investigators turned their attention to the engines. Four Europrop TP400-D6 turboprops, each capable of generating 11,000 horsepower. The data revealed something unsettling. Three of them, engines one, two, and three, had frozen at idle power just seconds after takeoff. Captain Jaime de Gandarillas tried to increase power, but the controls wouldn't respond. Why? Mechanical failure was ruled out. The propellers were spinning, fuel was flowing, and all components were intact. The problem wasn't mechanical, it was something far more subtle, the software. This is where FADEC, Full Authority Digital Engine Control, came into play. A cutting edge system designed to manage every aspect of engine performance. But something had gone wrong with the electronic control units, AQS, the brains of each engine. Airbus sent a team to the assembly plant in Seville, and what they found was a devastating human error. During the software installation, someone had accidentally erased the torque key calibration data. Without that data, the FADEC couldn't interpret the engine sensor signals. The result? Three of the four engines became locked at minimum power. On June 3rd, 2015, Less than a month after the accident, Airbus released a preliminary statement. The aircraft's systems functioned normally, except for the affected engines. But one question remained. How did this go unnoticed? The investigation dug deeper into quality control procedures at the assembly line. It revealed that the software installation process lacked sufficient safeguards. It was a manual step, vulnerable to mistakes, and there was no automatic verification system to flag the problem before takeoff. Worse still, 
the cockpit displayed no critical warning as the aircraft taxied to runway 09. By the time Hemi and his crew realized the failure, at 120 meters, 400 feet altitude, it was already too late. Saitam doesn't stop there. They investigate whether Airbus had been warned before, and yes, they had. In 2014, an internal report had pointed out risks in the A400M software installation process, but the recommendations were left hanging with no concrete action taken. This wasn't an isolated flaw in MSN 023. It was a systemic failure that could have affected the entire fleet. Investigators also analyzed the fourth engine, number four, which functioned correctly. Why didn't it fail? Its EQ didn't suffer the same deletion error, but that wasn't enough to save the flight. Meanwhile, simulator tests recreate the scenario. With three engines stuck in idle, the A400M couldn't stay in the air or maneuver back to San Pablo. Experts agree, the crew never had a chance. There was no emergency procedure for such a catastrophic and silent failure. The final report, though not fully public, points to a lethal combination. A human error on the ground, a lack of redundancy in the system's design, and an absence of alerts that could have given Jaime and Manuel a chance to react. Airbus, for its part, acknowledges its responsibility and promises changes, but the damage is already done. The MSN 023 accident becomes a case study on how reliance on technology without proper safeguards can lead to tragedy. This crash shakes the industry. Airbus orders urgent inspections across the A400M fleet on May 19, 2015. Countries like Spain, the UK and Turkey suspend test flights until the case is clarified. New software verifications and cockpit alerts are implemented to prevent another disaster. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency, ESA, approved the changes and flights resume in June. But the price has already been paid. Four lives and an unforgettable lesson. The test flight of MSN 023 reminds us that even the most advanced technology depends on human hands. A single mistake in a line of code, a slip-up in a factory, and everything collapses in just three minutes. Jose Luis and Joaquin survived to tell the story, but Jaime, Manuel, Gabriel, and Jesualdo became symbols of what should never have happened, and what must never happen again. In Seville, there is no official public memorial, but the memory lives on in the aviation community. José Luis de Augusto, one of the survivors, was awarded the Medal of Andalusia in 2018, a tribute to his bravery. Today here, we honor the four who never made it back. Thank you for joining me on this journey to May 9th, 2015. If you enjoyed this reconstruction, give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Which accident would you like me to analyze in future videos? Leave me a comment so I can add it to my list. See you in 7 days, friends.